laminated IPS kits are all the rage now. I've taken a look at a few from Funny Playing that mostly worked. I have a few things I'd like to see changed. And funny enough, there's another laminated GBA kit out there that I don't think I've seen anyone talk about. I'm very intrigued, and from the outside looking in, I think it's going to solve all of the issues I had with the other kits. But before I can officially say that, I gotta show you how to build it. Alright, let's do this. I bought the white shell because I was gonna go for an all white look, but then I just realized that this is not a white screen lens. I'm not gonna go with the original gray buttons. Instead, I'm gonna go with these purple beauties here. I think this white and purple is gonna look beautiful, so let's do it. This is everything that's included with it. You've got the mod kit and the laminated screen, and then you've got your buttons and metal pieces and everything else that you have to install yourself. All right, let's put all this off to the side. Let's tear it apart. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six tri-wing screws. And then we got one Phillips down here in the battery compartment. Then we can just lift up and as long as you unscrew everything it'll come right up set that off to the side we don't need it when i get my game boys in i fix and clean them all in one fell swoop so this is already clean tested and ready to go but this is the point where i recommend getting some ipa this is 99 percent clean the back side i would definitely take a look in that power switch and clean it up i've got a short on that if you want to learn how to do it definitely make sure you clean that cart slot too your mom's toothbrush is a really handy tool and then we've got a phillips screw here another phillips screw over here and then there's another spot for one here, but mine doesn't have one there. Most Game Boys I find don't have all three screws in them. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter. Just take them out. Uh, lift up these two tabs here. Then you can take your screwdriver or something small and lift that out. Now we can go ahead and just lift up by the cart slot and you might have a membrane or two come with you. And this is the point where you'd want to clean the front half of your motherboard. Again, isopropyl alcohol toothbrush. It's going to go a long way. You may have seen a kit like this before because this is just another drop-in kit. I have not taken a look at this one yet, but this is just a laminated screen lens on this drop-in kit. This is an incredibly simple kit. I think this is the only GBA kit I've ever seen that needs a power line. And these are the kits that don't require soldering. So my Game Boy uses a 40-pin connector. On the GBA, there's the 32 pin and the 40 pin. This kit comes with both ribbon cables, so don't worry. Either way, you're going to want to slide it in like this to where the wire is soldered in this spot here. And the touchpad is sticking out just above the link port. It'll be like this for the 32 pin. And I'm just going to go ahead and lock these two tabs down. I'm going to save the soldering for last. So we'll get to the PCB here. We can lift this black part up here. You're going to want to flip your board over, actually, because you don't want to see the pins on this one and it doesn't stick in that far so don't force it it should look something like this now i'm going to swap back over to the shell i'm not exactly sure what these two acrylic pieces are for since this kit is laminated we don't need spacers it's only going to fit in one way we're going to put this metal piece down like that and then there are four screw holes here but you really only need to put in two the screws used here are the littlest phillips head screws in the bunch it will come with a new battery contact because you have to put it in yourself Apparently it's too hard for them to do that in the factory when it's made. It's going to go on this side here and it's going to go in this orientation. Might be a little tough to fit in there. It's a tight squeeze, but that just means it's not going to fall out easily. Usually it clicks in, but it didn't this time. Now let's uh, put the screen in. And do they not? They don't give you any sticky tape. <laughs> there's no peel on the lens and there's no sticky tape on the edges. I guess it's time for some more Jake Simmons arts and crafts. I'm just going to go ahead and cut up this double-sided tape. Since I'd like a little something to secure it at the top, I'm going to cut some up there too. Now that we've got some tape at the top and bottom, we should be good to go. I know this is upside down, but we can stick the ribbon cable through there and stick it down. It's only going to fit in one way on this side of things. We can take this whole assembly and put it down like this. You're going to want to lift this latch up and then stick this ribbon cable in right there and latch it down. I'm actually going to take a piece of the double-sided tape that's left over. I'm going to stick it down in the middle here so we can uh, secure our little board. That way it should prevent this board from shorting to this board since there's no foam or protective film included at all. If you have capped on tape, I recommend using capped on tape. And I'm actually going to do that in addition to that double-sided tape. It doesn't hurt to be too safe. Now is our time to put in the light pipe and the buttons. The D-pad right in there. B on the inside, A on the outside. The D-pad membrane goes in like this. A and B membrane goes in like that. And start and select is only membrane, so we can just put that in 
right there. You'll find your light pipe in the bag of screws and it just goes right in there. But before we fully close this up, we're gonna to want to stick down this touchpad. This doesn't have any double-sided tape on it. If you wanna use double-sided tape to stick it down, you can, but it should pinch itself up against the shell since there's not much room here. So make sure it's folded over like this, and then you're gonna to wanna to slowly back your shell into place while keeping an eye on that touchpad to make sure it doesn't fall out of that hole. And if you're having trouble making the motherboard flat, your speaker's probably stuck over here. It's got a little tab on it, so it only goes in one way. So you can just push it in with your tweezers. Then we can put our three screws in, one right here, one right here, and a third one right here if you want an extra one. The last thing we gotta do here, if you really don't wanna solder, you can take this wire and wrap it around this positive battery terminal. This is probably a little too loose. You're gonna to wanna to get it nice and tight. Or the better way of doing it would just be to solder it. And I'm gonna to solder to this pin right here. It's upside down, but it's the second one from the off position. I'm trying my best to get a good angle here. It should look something like this when you're done. Now we can put the side pieces in. And since the Game Boy is face down, the R and L are flipped, power switch goes down there. If you're using the new screws, the last seven are all tri-wing. I'm gonna reuse the black one, but other than that, I'll use all the new screws. Black one down here, swap over the tri-wing and screw those last six in. Now I'm gonna put the batteries in. Beautiful. For me, the touch sensor activates around the Nintendo logo, and it's actually pretty responsive, so that's a good thing. But I'd rather be able to hold select and do R and L to adjust the brightness. And this thing isn't happening, so that's a good thing. There are eight levels of brightness. This one is the lowest, and this is the brightest at the eighth level. If you press and hold, it will put up grid lines. I'm not a fan of that. And apparently you can go black and white with its own set of grids. This is the funny playing laminated kit. These are both of their brightest settings, and these are their lowest settings. This one does get brighter than this one, but the colors are still like very accurate and it's still plenty bright. I definitely wish it was brighter like this one though. The colors look fantastic on this, but the colors are just about the same on these. Really the only difference between these two is this one was nicer to build in. I like this one because it feels more structurally sound. And then of course the brightness levels, but the colors look exactly the same to me. I'm gonna spend some quality time with this Game Boy and let you know my thoughts and opinions on it in about uh now. This thing is beautiful. Not just the screen and how great the colors are, but I'm so glad I went with this color combo. It's very pretty. But unfortunately, that's where the beauty ends. The more you look at it, the more imperfections you find. Like the fact that this laminated screen is not center. Maybe I'm a little harsh here because nothing's cut off, it's just really close to the top and right edges. And there's no way to adjust it because the touchpad is the only way to control it. And all that does is brightness, grid lines, and apparently black and white. At least Funny Playing allows you to access an OSD with the touchpad and they actually center their screens. Look, I'm sure this doesn't happen very often. Well, I hope it doesn't. And I would let it slide if the screen lens wasn't freaking plastic. Why? Glass is just plain better. And now this piece of plastic is gonna be stuck to the screen for the rest of its life. And the whole point of laminated screen lenses is so you don't have to worry about hair, dust, fingerprints, misaligned screens. And at least with other kits, I have the option to not use the crappy plastic screen lens, or at least have the ability to remove the plastic lens when it gets too scratched up later down the line because it's inevitably gonna happen since it's not glass. I was so excited for both of these kits and both of them let me down. If either of these companies are watching, here's what I would change. Keep the design of this shell and add double-sided tape around the edges of a glass screen lens. Make sure there's no need to solder a wire for power like every other GBA kit. If you aren't going to make sure that every screen is perfectly centered, give me the option to adjust it. And for Pete's sake, let me solder some button controls. No brackets, no plastic lens, no wrapping exposed wire around the battery terminal. Keep the beautiful colors of the screen in the relatively easy build process. Essentially, I want Funny Playing's laminated GBC kit, but for GBA. Because that kit is the gold standard. Both kits are so close to greatness but I still can't recommend either of them. I'll be sticking to my classic V2 for now. So what do you guys think? Have you tried this kit? Have you even heard of this kit? Let me know in those comments down below. But anyways, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Okay, how many of you noticed how dumb I was this whole time? I have L and R completely upside down. I'm so very dumb.